It is lots of work. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome. Happy Saturday. I'm glad you guys could join us. My name is Marnie Hernandez, and today we are learning about Arizona. Um, you know, the, the fun thing about doing these guys is, you know, we're learning about different destinations, different vendors to help sell to your clients, right? And if you don't know anything about Arizona, they have a ton of, of exciting places, things to see. Um, I don't know if you guys saw my Facebook page. Um, I put a, a, let me show you really quick, um, like bucket lists for each, you know, different city, country, et cetera. And uh, Arizona is one of them. So it's kind of cool because you get to go through like this checklist. So let me show you really okay. quick. Um, and you guys can pull it out. As you see, I, I post a lot right here. Bucket list. Okay. There are 32 I posted in here. Um, Rhode Island, um, you know, Maine, mm -hmm. Charleston. So again, Arizona. So kind of, you know, when we go through this training now, let's see if they talk about these, you know, Cathedral right. Rock, Devil's Bridge, you know, different things to, to see and do. So, um, you know, and, and Utah and stuff. So if you guys, you know, we do these to, again, help um, to sell to your clients, help to um, learn about different destinations, different places and stuff. So, um, you know, you can book these vacations for them. Now, um, oops, what am I doing? I'm already, hold on. Um, da, 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 let me go back. Um, you know, and then, and then again, um, another cool thing about doing this is, you um, you know, you get invited on lunch and learns, you get invited to special webinars, um, fam trips, familiarization trips, et cetera. So, um, you know, and, and again, a lot of times uh, you'll get um, gifts and stuff. People, you know, uh, vendors will send goodie bags or luggage or something, you know, some people have won backpacks and stuff. So you never know, you know, what you're going to earn. Okay. So, um, again, we're learning about um, Arizona today. Um, we've got a whole list of everything, you know, we've done trainings on here, um, a spreadsheet. So if you guys, you know, want to copy that, it's great. Um, so if you have somebody that's going, you know, to the British Virgin Islands and you like don't even know anything about it, then all you need to do is click right here and, and learn about it. Britain, Cairo, Egypt. Uh, and then we're always doing updates also. So again, let us know what you want to do for next month. Okay. Um, this month, uh, let me show you for next or this month, um, what we're doing. Um, do we have any brand new agents today joining us? Uh, just want to find out um, if you're new with us, so I can kind of give you a, a run through. But right here, we have it um, listed of what we're doing. So we're doing Arizona today, Clea, Margaritaville at sea. Um, how about Italy? How about Colombia, Peru, New York City? So we do them Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Um, so join us. Again, the link to sign up and register is right here. Sandy puts them in here. They're under featured under our certificate workshop program. So get in, pre-register, let's learn together and have fun, okay? All right, uh, so about two months. Okay, so again, if you're brand new with us um, and you're in Tucson, cool. So you'll be able to answer some of these questions for us. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in here and register if you haven't registered yet. It's very easy. Whenever you're registering, you're always gonna put Archer Travel. Archer Travel is the agency, okay? Um, the uh, Travel Consortia is Travel Leaders Network, okay? So make sure you register. If you're just getting registered, don't worry, we'll wait for you. Um, so we go through the training. A lot of times we'll take turns reading, et cetera. Um, a lot of people will follow along on their phone um, and then take the test online. Um, we're finishing, we finished, didn't we finish Caribbean? No, we're finishing Caribbean on the 7th. Today we're finishing Israel after Arizona. Arizona is a short one. Uh, Caribbean, we're going to finish on the 7th after Clea. Okay. All right. Okay, thanks. Um, all right. So again, um, follow along on your phone. Uh, we do take a test. Um, I do not record the test any longer. Um, so if you're live with us, great. You'll be able to take the test with us. If not, um, 
you'll have to take the test on your own if you leave for any reason, okay? Um, Costa Rica, I think we did Costa Rica, um, but I can add it right here. Yeah, we did Costa Rica. I don't know how long ago, but you know that may be one we want to do an update on. So I'll put it on my list because everybody loves Costa Rica. I got to go there. Profit agility, guys. Profit agility. Um, I got to go to Costa Rica in a three bedroom for $138 for the entire week. Okay. That's through um that's through Profit Agility, one of our vendors. Uh $138 for a three bedroom the entire week. So take advantage of our perks, guys. Um, okay. So again, go in and um, let me just show you really quick why we're so make sure everybody's registered. Um, this is Profit Agility, one of our vendors in the Travel Cafe. Make sure you register with them. Uh, a lot of people do like daily commissions with these guys and stuff. Um, but I use it all the time. You know, you want to go on vacation right here. Sort within the last 60 days or next 60 days. And I always use it by the, the cheapest, okay, the price. Um, but yeah, it had Costa Rica here. Let me see if it does have it again. Um, it may not be as cheap as it was when I got it. But when I do these trainings, I always um, look and see. So Costa Rica, all right. So this isn't the same one, but look at this. $1,800, we get it for $866, okay? Um, so as I said, it was like $3,000. I got it for $138, okay? I also got Disney World Hotel, 15 minute um, from the resort or from Disney World for $300 for a three bedroom for the entire week. So definitely guys, check it out um, for that. Uh, when is that training? Which training? Profit Agility or what? Um, Mary has a question or at least she has her hand raised. Okay, um, go ahead and ask hi, Mary. Hi, I'm trying to log in um, to the um, training. Profit and, and I'm sorry. Travel agent, but uh, when I when I go and they ask for a uh, agency and I click to find it, I did not find the archer. Um, in the right here you put other, and then you put archer travel down here. Okay, okay. And you put the IATA number, Travel Leaders Network. Okay. Uh, um, IATA number. I right put here. It. Yep. And then again, you're gonna memorize that. That's our driver's license for booking travel. I just put it in the um, chat for you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, of course. So again, very easy to register guys. So um, get in and register and then go to Arizona. We're gonna get started in just a moment. Um, profit Agility, uh, we have done training on that and um, I'll probably do it again because they actually, um, once you sign up, you get added to the group for profit agility um and they do like a week a monthly training on it um so maybe i'll add that for next month also because um again it's a, it's a great program to to have so profit agility um, marnie i had one other question okay on the certificate sheet there's one for you know i'm a harry potter fan right the harry potter um Universal. experience that right. link is dead do you okay. know of, of a better link to get to that? Um, and, and just so you guys know, a lot of these get up, you know, are no longer valid or something, or they take it out or something. So it's right here for London. So let's see. Copy. So yeah, like Switzerland, we're doing over because Switzerland is no longer valid either. Um, so again, some of these have changed. Um, but you can watch the YouTube video on it, at least, you know, so you can see what it was about. Um, but in this case, let's see if they have it. Harry. Uh, so they probably took it out there. Harry Potter London course. So there, let's go ahead. I'll copy it here. There you go. Try that one. That should take you into it. Okay, it's on OTT and under the um, American flag? Uh, UK. I think it's under the UK. Okay. So let me see if I can put that in here. I'll just need to send this to uh, Sandy and have her update it for us. No, I don't mean to get you off topic. It's just no. one I've really wanted to do. 
No worries. That's, yeah. that's good. I've really wanted to do it. Okay, perfect. No. So that was under attractions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let me go ahead and send a message over to Sandy to have her update the list. Oh, got it. Sandy. Oh, you rock, Moni. You rock, Moni. <laughs> oh, I've been awesome. wanting to do this one for so long. All right. I actually it. did the Harry Potter tour in London, the actual Harry Potter tour in London. Oh, cool. Okay. Not the, not the Warner Brothers studio. It was the one where they walk you around to all the different places in London where the film was shot. Okay, cool. How fun. I think I think oh, you mentioned God. that when we were doing the London one. I feel like oh. you mentioned it then too. I love it. Spreadsheet. Okay, there. I just asked Sandy to update it in the spreadsheet for us too. So, uh, yeah, Switzerland was no longer valid, so we are redoing that one um, this month. So, yeah, thank you, Donna. So, because um, I know somebody went in to do Switzerland, and it's like that's no longer there. So we found another one. So again, keep us updated, guys, so we can make sure that you know we keep the update things updated for everybody, and um, you know, because we want to make sure everybody has access. And um, and just again, so you know, things do change and get updated and stuff. So, um, you know, but again, um, if it's no longer there, you still have the YouTube in there that you can um, follow up on and um, and at least get an idea. So, again, if you have somebody going somewhere. Um, Thank you, know, you so much, Marnie. Just, I really appreciate it. Of course. Again, it's, it's that was one I was dreaming about doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a team effort. Um, just so you guys know, we're doing Arizona now, and then we're finishing up Israel. Okay, guys. And then um, the ones that cre completed Caribbean with us, um, we're doing the second part of the Caribbean on Wednesday. Okay. So we're doing a uh, second part of Israel today and the Caribbean part two on Wednesday after Clea. Okay. All right, guys. Did so, Clea um, 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 put in their um, put in their course for the year. Is that what it is? Um, yeah, I think uh, again, um, uh, Christine Whitaker goes in and and pulls some of these trainings for us and stuff. So, um, it must be one of the the new trainings updates or something. So, because guess what came in the mail, Marnie? Your my card? Clea card. Woo! My Clea card. <laughs> it's sitting on my desk because I don't know what to do with it, but it's sitting on my desk. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations. It's very nice. Um, I'm sorry. Um, what is the access code for the uh, my profit agility? Okay. So again, you know, make sure on this. Um, you know, again, this is an, a different training. When you go into your um travel cafe, that's where you're going to find all the access to the vendors. So make sure you follow that. So you're going to go down here to suppliers in the travel cafe. Do you guys see my screen? Yes. And make sure you follow the instructions. So you go to U.S. suppliers and then you're going to go down to profit agility. OK, so it's an alphabetical order. Uh, bah, bah. Right here, profit agility. OK, and then it's going to be right here, all the information. And right here is the access code. OK, and you register here. So um, there you go. So again, follow those instructions. Anytime you're registering with a vendor, follow how to register exactly. Because again, you want to make sure you register correctly. Also, guys, in the chat box, if you have anything you want to talk about or, or questions, put it to everyone. Because I'm going to go ahead and get started on the training because we have two trainings to do today. Um, so we want to make sure that everybody, um, you know, can answer, get your questions answered. Again, Cyprus, we finished Cyprus. We're going to do the second part of Caribbean Wednesday after CLIA. And we're going to do the second part of Israel today. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead to start on Arizona. Okay. Um, so discover... Um, do, 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 do discover Arizona's many landscapes. Ask your clients, um, ask, are your clients ready to really travel? Perhaps in an authentically American way. If so, let Arizona take them on a legendary highway, evoking the early days of the great American road trip on a cattle drive across scenic terrain. How about a walking tour of the old West towns where tensions simmer between sheriffs and outlaws? On a river raft ride through nearly 2 billion years of geological 
history or on a hike through tribal lands to marvel at the earth's sculptural beauty and connect with those who most ardently preserve it. From col colorful desert, deserts and canyons to green valleys and mountains, Arizona's landscapes are brimming with natural beauty, adventure, history, wellness, art, and culinary flavor. Help your clients discover the best of what the Grand Canyon State has to offer. Enroll today in the training program. Okay, so we're going to get started. Learn um, What we get to learn today is the popular natural attractions, such as Grand Canyon, Antelope Canyon, um, Horseshoe Bend, uh, Monument Valley, Seguro National Park in the Sonoran des Desert, along with hidden gems and great areas for skiing and other winter sports. The iconic roadside attractions embodying vintage Americana along Route 66. How to experience American Indian culture and best practices for enjoying tribal lands. Best places to sample award-winning American Indian Mexican cuisine, as well as local wine. The organic food scene helped Tucson, Tucson, we got somebody here from Tucson, win the UNESCO recognition for gastronomy. How about dude ranches and visiting boom towns of the Old West? Where to experience vortexes and other wellness phenomena? The artists enclaves, enclaves of Sedona, Bisbee, and Tubac, and much more. Graduation benefits, you get a certification um, graduation as an Arizona specialist. So again, you're going to get that and get be able to post that. Um, continuing ed units uh, for members of the Travel Institute. So this is another program we need to verify and get into and be able to start putting your credits on there. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click enter now. Okay. And it's going to take us into the course. I think there's three courses we're going to take today. Yes, three courses. So it shouldn't take that long. Again, follow along on your phone. Uh, we will take a test after each chapter, okay? So again, be ready and we will wait to, for everyone. We'll make sure everybody has access. All right, so again, this chapter, um, this is the great outdoors. Uh, vividly presents the lay of the land, giving you a strong grasp of what Arizona's top natural attractions are, where they're situated in relation to one another, what sorts of activities can be enjoyed at them, hiking, river rafting, kayaking, camping, stargazing, and skiing. Sections are also devoted to major hubs from which to explore the great outdoors and areas where a variety of winter sports are on offer. So go ahead and click start here. And again, you know, we'll take turns reading and stuff. Again, it's a team effort. So let's all learn together. All right, so Arizona, the Grand Canyon State, Chapter One, Arizona's Great Outdoors. So introduction, okay. So in Arizona, it's not very big, huh? In Arizona, the very earth mem mesmerizes travelers with its colors and shapes. Trans huh? Um, there in the you can click the settings with the next to previous in order to make it to zoom it. Okay. There's thank a you. fit to zoom or zoom to fit. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Zoom to okay. fit. There we go. And then you thank just you. Need, yeah. Then you just need to scroll if it doesn't have error. Okay. All right. So thank you. Um, transforming stunning stretches of desert sand, cacti, and scrub to iridescent canyons and cliffs to breathtaking mountains and sky islands all sculpted by the elements over thousands of years. Arizona also shimmers with a remarkable human legacy that encompasses American Indians, adventurers, who shape the culture of the Wild West, and innovators who today practice the many arts of living well. Both the land and the people make Arizona a majestic destination to explore. Uh, perfect for anyone seeking inspiration. In this course, we'll introduce you to the state's key attractions, um, including natural wonders, cultural interests, culinary delights, and a source of wellness. We'll offer tips on making the most of your clients' travels while perhaps surprising you with some new possibilities like wine tours and ski vacations. We'll begin with a look at the Arizona as a destination for beautiful outdoor explore exploration. 
helpful resources. So to learn more, be sure to download a PDF available by clicking resources, which is up here. Um, it contains links to further information on attractions mentioned in the chapter. So again, um, great resources for you guys. A lot of times when people are doing trainings like this and stuff, they'll still like make a folder on their desktop or they'll do a binder and put this information in. So that way, you know, and can refer back to it later. All right, how about outdoor adventure? No place on earth like Arizona, a place where outdoor enthusiasts can do everything from hiking to ballooning to river rafting among the stunning otherworldly geological formations. The Grand Canyon State, nicknamed after its most famous attraction, is also home to a host of other fascinating places to explore, examples of which we'll discuss in this section. So outdoor adventure. So here, top natural attractions. And this is something, you know, you may want to save to keep track so you can share it with your certificate. Uh, this section will offer an overview of uh, Arizona's best loved natural wonders, which set the stage for a variety of outdoor adventures, such as hiking, trekking, horseback riding, camping, guided Jeep, helicopter, and boat tours, as well as rafting and kayaking not to mention taking awesome photos. So just a few standout examples of Arizona's rich variety of terrains include, so you have canyon, canyons. The most famous of these is the sprawling 2270 square mile Grand Canyon. One of the seven natural wonders of the world where nearly 2 billion years of earth history are on display among bands of rocks that shimmer in gold, red, purple, and green. Grand Canyon extends 277 miles along the Colorado River, bookended in the west by the Hoover Dam in Nevada and the Glen Canyon Dam in northeast of Arizona. The area encompasses the South Rim, North Rim, Grand Canyon National Park, and West Rim, Rim <laughs> overseen by the Hualapai Tribe. Another remarkable site in northern Arizona is Antelope Canyon, a slot canyon consisting of deep trenches within soft rock formations carved long ago by water, leaving paths so narrow that channel narrow uh, beams of, of ethereal light. Boynton and Oak Creek Canyons are major attractions in the cultural wellness hub of Sedona in north central Arizona. Dozens of scenic hiking and biking trails lure visitors to explore the captivating red rock formations. And then visitors seeking primeval beauty should venture southeast to Aravapai Wilderness Canyon, a thousand foot deep chasm in the Sonoran Desert where flowing water, sycamores and cottonwood help sustain an abundance of fish, birds and animals like big corn sheep and rig ring tail cats. Okay, here you have cliffs <laughs> between the Grand Canyon and the Utah border is the Arizona Strip, where the vermilion cliffs emerge in indolating ri ribbons of red, brown, and white known as the wave. Look how beautiful that is. Forming a, a set of giant stairs leading to the Colorado Plateau. Made of Navajo sandstone, this remote formation harbors the endangered California condor. Permits are needed to hike the wave. The remains of the American Indian cliff dwellings can be visited in the eastern and southern regions of the state. These will be discussed in next chapter section on culture and history. Uh, this is rivers and lakes. The Grand Canyon owes much, owes, owes much of its dramatic beauty to the carving performed by the Colorado River over several millennia. Today, the Colorado forms Arizona's western border with southern, southern Nevada and California. Heading south from the Grand Canyon, the river passes stunning scenery on the way to Lake Mead and Lake Havasu, past the Cibola and Imperial National Wildlife Refuge, to the old frontier town of Yuma, all filled uh, with things to do and see. North of the Grand Canyon is Horseshoe Bend, where the Colorado River makes a two, look how beautiful that is, 270 degree turn, creating marvelous landscape of geological sculpture. The bend is near Lake Powell, uh, right on the Arizona-Utah border and home to Rainbow Bridge National Monument, located in Utah. 
uh, the world's highest natural bridge and an icon for local American Indian tribes. All these attractions can be found inside the Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. Your clients can visit the Rainbow Bridge by taking a tour that departs from Wawea Marina on the Arizona side of Lake Powell. All right, then we have the valleys. One of the most photographed landscapes in the U.S., the Monument Valley Navajo Tribal Park. Northeastern uh, Arizona is like a playground of massive sandstone stru structures that seemingly pop out of the ground, uh, reaching heights of up to a thousand feet. Its panorama includes Mitten Butte, but Butte, Butte <laughs> uh, Merrick Butte, and Ear of the Wind. Canyon de Chalet, a 26 mile valley of greenery within the desert, is the longest uninterrupted human inhabited area in the Colorado Plateau. From Spider Rock, visitors will see crimson red walls, cliffs, and the lush green cottonwood trees, livestock, cornfields, and Navajo homes that dot the bottom of the canyon, along with the remains of the Pueblo dwellings. How about the petrified forest? Encompassing a large deposit of petrified wood, the Petrified Forest National Park covers about 346 square miles of semi-desert shrub step, as well as highly eroded and colorful badlands. It's located in the eastern part of the state. Scenic Desert. The Sonora Desert stretches through southern Arizona from California down into Mexico. It's a sandy landscape that embodies an iconic image of the American frontier, dotted by a fascinating array of cacti. As one of North America's wettest deserts, it sustains a vast variety of wildlife, from bobcats and coyotes to a dozen different and endemic uh, bird species, as well as amphibians and fish. Previously mentioned, a Ravapai Wilderness Canyon is found here. In Segura National Park, which is also situated within the Sonoran de Desert, visitors can view multitudes of its majestic namesake cactus. The Segura cactus can grow up to 70 feet tall, and it often takes 100 years to sprout its first arm. The park extends to the west and east of Tucson with trails showcasing desert flora, including the spidery Ocotillo, fluffy teddy bear cactus, the green bean-like pencil chola, and hundreds of other plant species. For a spectacular show, have your clients visit in April when the cacti blossom. Sharing a border with Mexico, Oregon Pipe Cactus National Park our national monument in Southern Arizona is a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. Okay, that could be a test question. It names, um, its name pays tribute to the star resident, the Oregon Pipe Cactus, a species rarely seen growing wild. And now Sky Islands. The Chiricahua National Monument, which sits within the land of the Chiricahua Apaches, offers yet another remarkable display of geological sculpture, this time made of volcanic ash and spread across 12,000 acres is in seemingly gra um, gravity-defying balancing acts. Uh, topping off the experience are the appearances made by the park's residents, some of which include uh, coatis, javelinas, mountain lions, and black bears. All right, so lots of different variety to see and do. All right, so time uh -oh. for a pop quiz. Okay, so again, recording. yep. All right, so we've now finished this portion. Now we're going to go back to the main one, and we're going to talk about activities. Can I read this one? You can read this one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Activity hubs. In this section, we detail a sampling of activities at some major sites around which to plan itineraries. While certain activities can be enjoyed only through an arranged tour, others can be done on one's own. Though visit, visit, visitors should check beforehand for information on park fees and hours, as well as trail conditions. To learn more, use the links to these attractions made available and resources, which we will probably not be looking into while up there on the right. Mm -hmm. When to visit. With about 350 days of sunshine per year and winter days averaging highs in the 60s and 70s Fahrenheit, Arizona is a great destination in December. 
January or February, especially for outdoor exert, um, exertion on land, while spring and fall are considered high seasons. However, conditions can vary and operating hours at the park should always be checked. Those and travel lands. Tribal lands. Some attractions, attractions are on tribal lands and may require visitor permits. It helps to work through a tour company that is familiar with such details and can monitor factors like weather and operating hours. On to the next right. page. Activity hubs. Grand Canyon. Let's see what this has to say. Oh, that's a nice picture. The Grand Canyon. Simplify your client's by recommending a hotel in the park or urge them to arrive at the entrances for the south and north rim before 10 a.m. Remember that, that might be a test question. The Grand Canyon Railway Hotel in Williams, the starting point for the Grand Canyon Railroad, Railroad will put them within easy access of the park by rail. Other towns located close to the south rim entrance includes the uh, Tucson, closest town only seven miles from the south rim, Kingman in the heart of historic Route 66, Blackstaff, historic downtown with observatory, Amtrak station, and Page near Lake Poa. I don't like how difficult it was to read <laughs> the white in here. Um, Jason, where did you go? Did you go to top natural attractions or activity hubs? I, I think we're in the second one, activity hubs. Let me activity go backwards. Hub. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. I can. Because I'm confused. <laughs> oh, exactly. um, the answers are right above. So yeah, we we finished top natural attraction. Then we went to activities hub. Um, you click it. Then uh, we already went through when to visit and travel land. So you just yeah, we went next. here. To it took me a minute. I had to go through a different website to get to it. Okay, I see where mm. you're at. Got you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we're in Grand Canyon. We're still yep. in number one. Um, gotcha. suggest an adventure park as a side trip. Grand Canyon suggest an adventure park as a side trip. The Grand Canyon West is a west, uh, yes, it is in the west, is a park offering unforgettable experiences on Hualapi, Hualapai travel land. Perhaps the most fat, famous being the glass skywalk that curves out 70 feet over the edge of the cliffs, giving visitors the sensation of floating 4,000 feet above the, of the canyon floor. Before I continue, is everyone good? Is anybody else lost? <laughs> I just <laughs> hey, I was only lost because my my everything crashed on me. So no, yeah, but just in case. I'm just plain lost. I didn't get I got one of them wrong on the last one. I can't figure out which oh. one. What's the answer is oh, um, right above in the chat. So go go yeah, into go the, to chat the chat and you should be able to um see the answers. It's uh number one, Sigura. You got it. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> so hopefully everybody passes and gets caught up. And again, just listen, because then we're going to have another test. So we want to make sure everybody follows, mm -hmm. gets caught up. I'm glad I asked. <laughs> Is there anybody else lost? No? Going once, going twice. Well, have fun. Hiking and biking trails, helicopter tours, zip lining. Oh, feel free to mention in chat if you're lost. Uh, zip lining adventures complete or uh, open parentheses complete with a pontoon right what is that at the bottom of the canyon close parentheses and white water rafting on the Colorado River round out the fun the park offers cabins and RV sites for camping and there is a Wallapai did I see that right lodge in Peach Springs for non-campers wanting to start their day early back to the Grand Canyon yeah, the pontoon no. is one of those big boats that's like a flat boat that brings a lot of people and stuff. Oh, okay, okay. So that's number one. And now we go to the next phase, the Phantom Ranch. Sightseeing, hiking, and camping. The most popular way to experience the Grand Canyon is to visit the South Rim and peer out over the Bright Angel Trail leading down the canyon's wall to the Phantom Ranch campsite, thousands of feet below. Other campsites are available. Okay, good, I'm not being too How loud. Fun. Um, Some people are recording music literally in the next room over. Horseback riding. Wait, did I skip it? Wait, did I skip anything? No, the Phantom, the picture is just about uh, the Phantom Ranch. I wonder why it's called the Phantom Ranch. Horseback riding, horseback, 
as well as mule rides are offered on guided tours by private companies as both the south and north rims of the canyon. Okay. Just and that's a nice picture. Yeah, that was okay. All right. And now we want to rafting. rafting. Nice picture. I like these pictures. Yeah. I, I'm not entirely sure I'm fond of the color of that uh, river. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't look sanitary. But rafting see the grand canyon from a new perspective by rafting through it on the colorado river smooth water or white water trips range in length from half a day to 13 days july and august are best for big water experiences rafting trips are arranged to the commercial river uh river uh, dang i lost myself rafting trips are arranged to a commercial river running companies and require advanced reservations Pouring from the air. Oh, did they get that picture? Oh, wait, I guess it's just now getting up. Maybe the helicopter's not parked. I mean, not flying yet. Touring from the air. Airplane tours will give your clients an inspiring sense of the magnitude of the Grand Canyon, while helicopters, which fly 1,000 feet lower, allow them to see the rock formations up close. Clients who like a little extra adventure might enjoy the unique perspective that a hot air balloon provides, including a look at the canyon's flora and fauna towards the power from both the south and north rim. Right. You finished reading the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Canyon. Oh, Back to the activity talk. City of Page. Okay. All right. I'm back to meeting myself. Wait, or did you say you were doing it? Well, I can do it. Oh, no, no. I can't. It's just that I heard that. Um, but Activity hubs. City of Page, a 2.5 hour drive from the Grand Canyon, South Rim, Page, or Page, a city located in the northern Arizona, serves as an excellent springboard for exploring Antelope Canyon, Vermilion Cliffs, National Monument, Monument Valley, Canyon de Chelly, and Glen Canyon National Recreation Area, which includes Lake Powell and Rainbow Bridge. Following are some of the activities that Page uh, Page's outfitters can help your clients enjoy. At least one of those has to be a test question. Let's slide on through. Ooh, that also that's a really nice picture. Antelope Canyon hiking. Your clients can take a guided trek into Antelope Canyon, the previously described Slot Canyon, where path leads where path leads. Uh, kayakers through shafts of sunlight, illuminating sculpted walls. Another magical landscape is the undulating geological formation known as the Wave, located in the Vermilion Cliffs National Monument. The site requires a permit. See link below. I'll click that eventually. No tour or permit is needed to hike to Horseshoe Bend or Bend from its parking lot to see the dramatic geological formations carved by the 270 degree bend in the Colorado River. So However, sad. your clients may wish to download an audio guide available online or find a tour that combines the bend with other attractions. The most popular time to visit is at sunset when the colors in the rocks are their most vibrant. A new barrier-free trail is available from the parking lot and most visitors find the 1.5 mile scenic hike easy to navigate. All right. Picking permits for the waves. The wave lottery system. There are two ways to obtain a permit. A permit to hike Coyote Butte's North, aka the wave. Submit an application at www.blm.gov four months in advance of your planned state, or if you're already in the area, participate in the new daily lottery by downloading the recreation.gov app at www.blm.gov. Note that this is a strenuous hike. See resources for more information. Back to hiking. That'd be cool, or, huh, guys? Definitely yep. something to see. Mm -hmm. On to the next slide. Boating. That's a nice picture, Lake Powell. Once inside a Glen Canyon National Recreation Area, your clients can explore Lake Powell on a boat tour that floats past the impressive Glen Canyon Dam and into the narrow reaches of the Navajo Canyon. On to the next slide, kayaking. That's a nice picture. Lake Powell Mar marinas can outfit your clients with various kinds of watercrafts that they can operate on their own. Kayaking tours are also available. I'd rather not because I have a feeling I would get myself lost or to fall out. So I'm not doing that on my own. 
the Horseshoe Bend rafting suggests a half day rafting trip on the calm waters of the Colorado River below Glen Canyon Dam around Horseshoe Bend and down to Les Ferry, a historic site in the great spot for fishing. All right. All right, you guys got okay. that? Jennifer, does this look like a horseshoe for you? A really warped one. <laughs> got it. Because for me, it does not look like one. Horse who been now. It on looks like one when my horse steps on his, but yeah. Ah, uh, I see. That's well, that's why it's called that. The Monument Valley. That's a nice picture. I mean, they're all nice pictures. Jeep tours. During the day around the moonlit night, because I gotta speed up. A Jeep tour takes guests into the depths of the high of the high desert. Check into purchasing guided tours of Monument Valley from Navajo tour operators who take guests down into the valley in jeeps for a narrated ride among its mythical formations. Iconic sites such as Air of the Wind, a large circular window carved or craved in the sandstone uh, cliffs, and other landmarks can only be accessed via guided tours. And then we go on to the next. Touring from the air. Oh, nice picture. I can look. A helicopter and fixed winged flight soar above area landmarks in and around Glen Canyon Lake uh, slash Lake Powell, including the previously decri described Rainbow Bridge. Helicopters can land on top Tower or Tower Buta or Butte, a, a 5,000 foot sandstone pillar located south of the lake. It's really nice. All right. Some side trips. Canyon de Chelly. Oh, nice greenery. Some side trips. Located on Navajo tribal lands, roughly 160 miles southeast of Page, Canyon de Chelly National Monument in Chinle, AZ, or Arizona, merits an overnight stay or longer. Explore the canyon walks that cradle hundreds of ancient Pueblo ruins. Plan a guided hiking tour to access scenic views, including Spider Rock Spire, about 800 feet tower, or damn, I got to slow down, 800 feet tall and towering sandstone cliffs. Local local private companies offer tours along the canyon floor by hiking horseback and vehicle or vehicle. See resources for further information, including permits for camping. Southwest of the Navajo lands is a petrified forest, a national park that allows geocaching and maintains trails that features archaeological interests, national environment or natural environment and the famous petrified logs, enjoy colorful sunsets, the incredible night sky, and inspiring sunrises when camping or hiking off the beaten trail in the wilderness area. What are geocaching or geocaching? Hey, did we finish I, everything on that? I don't know. Sure. Oh, yep. No, I think there's one more city of Tuscan. Tuscan. I can do this and leave the rest to you guys if you want. Okay, where where's uh, Tuscan? Oh, here. Oh, it's the next. Tucson. It's it's city of Tucson. Oh, Tucson. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Activity hub. City of Tucson. Tucson's cultural and dining scenes make it a good option for clients around or also seeking nearby adventures in the great outdoors. Located in the Sonoran Desert, Tucson sits in between two sections of the Saguaro National Park, the Rincon mountain district in the east and the Tucson mountain district in the west while the Chiricahua Chiricahua National Monument is 1.5 hour, five hours away by car outside Wilcox. If I said anything wrong I apologize please let me know. You're doing great. Thank you. That's a nice picture of a pose biking and running a popular way to experience tucson is to bike or run the loop which is a massive system of paved trails set within the picturesque desert landscape it runs continuously for 131 miles and connects the various parts of the city together with parks farmer markets and bmx trails bicycle rentals are available including e-bikes and there are even boutique hotels to be found along the trailways Meanwhile, the Tucson Mountain District of Saguaro National Park, west of the city, offers a six mile graded dirt road, the Bajada Loop Drive, that takes visitors through the cactus forest. On to the next part. The picture says Rincon Mountain District. 
hiking, horseback riding, and camping. The Tucson Mountain District also offers hiking trails that range from quick and easy. Valley View overlooks, Overlook is a particularly rewarding at sunset, while Signal Hills trails lead to scores of ancient petroglyphs, I almost read something else, to the exhilarating seven mile King Canyon tra Trail. The half mile desert discovery trail is wheelchair accessible. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Make sure to remember that. Those who are uh, want to focus on special needs too. Rincon Mountain District is a eastern region of Saguaro National Park. Features area for their areas for day hikes, horseback riding, and backcountry camping. The visitor center has information on these activities and cell camping permits. Here, hikers have a wide range of trails to choose from, such as the one mile round trip three man homestead trail through the grill through a grove of massive saguaro cacti, or the 20 mile tanque or tank verde ridge. Verde is uh, green in Spanish. Verde Ridge Trail that traverses steep and rocky terrain to the summit, uh, summit of Mika Mountain at 8,666 feet and back. A family-run tour operator, top tour operators offer trail rides on horseback. Oh, that sounds fun. But why are there only day trails, no night trails or That's night cool. hikes? Something I like actually that. went to Utah for a summer camp. Mm -hmm. And we took horses out and one of the horses threw the kid off. And because I was the quote unquote known horseback rider, I had to get on the horse that threw the kid off and broke his arm and oh, ride him geez. back. And he got my sweet horse. Oh, bro. <laughs> the reason why there's no night tours is because it's too easy to get lost in the desert yeah. at night. Sounds about right. Uh, thank, you. Is, but, well, well, thank you. Um, Viewing nature, and also that's tough, uh, Jennifer. That's tough. Viewing nature. The flora in the region around T Tucson encompasses not only the majestic Saguaro uh, cactus, but also the, all sorts of plant species as well as wildlife, all described in the previous section. April is a great time to visit. The cacti will be in bloom. On to the next slide. All right. The incredible rock formations, bird watching, slash wildlife viewing. In addition to hiking and camping in the fancy land of Gaudi like rock formations, visitors on Chiricahua Kahua National Monument will also find feathery friends to observe, such as Mexican jays. Okay, I guess I guess I'm Mexican too. Cactus cactus wrens. And sandhill cranes, as well as animals previously described, like javelinas, what are those? Poatis or cotis, mountain lions, and bears. Oh my. <laughs> now, on to the last part stargazing. As a sky island, Chiricahua, I apologize for butchering it, National Monument is a free of light pollution. Oh, dang, it's free of light pollution, making it the perfect place to view the nighttime skies within an hour's drive of Tuscan, uh, Tucson. Visitors can learn about views, learn about and view stars at the Peak, Peak National Observatory, a state-of-the-art research facility open to the public. On to the next part. All right. We have finished reading the city of Tucson. Back to, I forgot what I said. Oh, I think now, we're done, right? I believe next i think so yeah oops that's oh pop quiz oh stop recording all right thank you Diana. all right i'll go ahead and take winter so winter activities no shortage of outdoor winter fun in arizona warm temperatures in some areas make hiking biking camping very enjoyable but arizona's ample share of snowy attractions as well here are some examples Flagstaff, 7,000 feet above sea level with an average annual snowfall of over 100 inches. Flagstaff is one of the snowiest cities in the United States. Do you guys know that? That's oh. No, I didn't know that. All right. Skiing and snowshoeing. 
So skiing of, um, of Arizona ski offerings, the best known is arguably Arizona Snow Bowl Winter Resort. It's uh, with its good snow, long runs, plenty of terrain, and its location on the side of a volcano gives Snow Bowl an especially adventurous allure. One of the oldest continuously operated ski resorts in the U.S., it is located 12 miles outside of Flagstaff in the San Francisco Peaks. Located on a biodiverse sky island, Mount Lemon Ski Valley is the southernmost ski resort on the continental U.S., boasting 22 trails ranging in difficulty from Green Circle to Black Diamond. Rock climbing and hiking are also favorite activities here. Sunrise Park Resort in Greer, Arizona offers loads of winter fun across three mountain tops for a total of 65 trails. There is also a separate snowboarding area, cross country ski trails, and a special children's ski wee area. Sunrise Park Resort is owned and operated by the White Mountain Apache Tribe. Snowshoeing, snow biking, and cross country skiing. So um, <clears throat> all these activities can be enjoyed at Arizona Nordic Village in the Coconino National Forest near Flagstaff. So kind of cool to know that. How about snowmobiling? The Mormon Lake Pinewood Snowmobile Trail System east of Flagstaff traverses rolling hills on designated snowmobile trails for about 54 miles. See the Grand Canyon in the snow. Winter storms regularly bring several inches of snow to this site. And so for a picturesque hike, recommend that your clients pick a sunny day to walk along the rim of the canyon. They'll find a little more serenity than usual on the South Rim's Bright Angel Trail in the winter. All right, back to menu and then final. All right, so let's take our test. Hey guys, congratulations. Welcome back. We are now complete with chapter one and moving on to chapter two, Arizona's cultural landscape. Here you're going to learn about your clients um, in touch with the people, the legends and creative expression that gives Arizona an extraordinarily rich human dimension. Beginning with Arizona's communities of American Indians, the original and foremost caretakers of the land, and ending with the artists drawn to Arizona's natural beauty, this chapter will take you through tribal lands, boom towns from the Wild West down Route 66 and its fabled attractions and into ever evolving artists enclaves. So again, congratulations, everybody. Did you learn a lot on chapter one? I did. Now we're yes. gonna learn chapter two. You want me to read, Marnie? Sure, go ahead, yep. So okay. Arizona's cultural landscape. Um, introduction. Just as captivating as Arizona's geological history are the stories of the many kinds of people whose lives have intertwined with the land. A journey through Arizona puts travelers in touch with the earth-centered thinking of the American Indian tribes, the legend of the America's Wild West, the quirky wordside, roadside attractions dotting Route 66 that embody American creativity and humor, and the artists who infuse their communities with the new energy. Perfect. All right, I'll do American Indian. Okay. If I butcher the names, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, American Indian culture. While the stunning beauty of Arizona's landscapes can stir the soul of any visitor, the formations are the especially deep spiritual significance to the American Indian inhabitants whose ancestral connections to these lands date back to 12,000 years ago. Currently, 22 distinctive tribes, each with their own unique history and custom, custom, custom well within Amer Arizona's borders. This section will feature several tribes and explain how visitors can engage with them, helping to support their livelihoods and preserve the beauty of the land. Remember that the more detailed information on the uh, attractions presented can be found in the resource tab in the upper right-hand corner. All right. Visiting the tribal land. Well, let me make this bigger. Okay. 
Visiting natural wonders throughout the state of Arizona often leads to fascinating encounters with indigenous culture, especially when the attractions are on the tribal lands and require the help of the American Indian guide. One of the scared lands, the state's indigenous cultural tapestry is often on display at the museum and cultural centers, trading posts, open air um, markets, and cultural events, as well as other celebrations hosted by vibrant American Indian communities. Here, visitors can see the pagan tree and skill of the tribal dancers and musicians and discover often, often authentic ar artwork that preserve the traditions of the artist's ancestors. Select the marker to learn more about the six of the, era of the 22 tribes. So number one. Oh boy. <laughs> um, Hualapai. Hualapai. <laughs> also known as the people of the Tall Pines, the Hualapai tribe have thrived at the Grand Canyon West Rim for the last 800 years, relying primarily on the agriculture and recently tourism to making a living. One of their guiding beliefs is that the universe and the earth are connected in a circle with no beginning or end. Visitor, visitors to Eagle Point in the Grand Canyon West Park, home of the Grand Canyon Skywalk, can take a self-guided tour through an authentic Native American village consisting of homes, ovens, and sweet lodges for the view of the local, regional, tribal heritage and tradition. Meanwhile, the Halapool build singers, bird singers, give daily performances showcasing their traditional clothing dances, instruments, and songs tended intended as a gift to the universe. Okay. Um, number two. Go ahead, Marnie. How do you say that? <laughs> uh, the supai, maybe. <laughs> All the supai. <laughs> um, they're the people of the blue-green water. They have long been friendly neighbors of the Halapulai and are the only people living below the rim of the Grand Canyon. That's interesting. Adventurous visitors often eager to take the challenge to hike to the Hala, Hala, Halafua Falls. A, a bucket list Tava journey Tava from Tava Supai. Yeah. For many to see the beautiful blue green water trum, uh, tumbling down red cliffs and to swim in its pool. It falls in the Hala, I can't remember that. You know what I mean? Tribal lands and require a permit to visit. Wow. You have to have a permit. The price um, of which includes an overnight stay at either a campsite or a lodge. Beautiful. All right. Navajo. I can say Navajo. <laughs> <laughs> um, the second most popular, populous American Indian group in the U.S. is the Navajo or spread throughout the Southwest. Guided by the belief that the natural objects and creatures have spirits, they have cultivated an especially deep spiritual connection to the geological formations on the lands they inhabit. A perfect place to learn about the Navajo culture is Monument Valley Navajo Tribal Park in Northern Arizona, where Navajo guides will take visitors to the ear of the wind and other natural formations. They can also stop at the trading post as the view hotel to purchase artworks and crafts by Navajo silversmiths, potters and weavers who preserve their ancestry tradition traditional methods. All right. Okay, Navajo code talkers. You have to read Wait, this. what did I do? Okay. Yeah, it, it kicked us back to this. So just finish reading this and then I'll click that. Okay. A contemporary Navajo Indian community inhabits the bottom of the Green Valley of the nearby Canyon de Shelley National Monument where they herd sheep during the summer. Pueblo ruins dating as far back as 350 AD suggest this area may be among the long longest continual inhabited landscape in the North America. Navajo guides will lead excursions in Jeeps or on horseback. Ionic land formations include spider rock and it stops. Um, Navajo code talkers, did you know? Navajo military personnel used a code developed from their native language to transmit intelligence during World War II, contributing especially to the victory at Tujima. Oh, I just really, I'm so sorry, guys. I read that wrong. Ayajima. 
Learn more interesting facts about the American Indians at the Arizona Array of Museum dedicated to their culture. Excellent examples featuring Navajo culture are the Navajo National, National Museum in the Window Rock, acclaimed for its rich exhibits that de uh, develop, devolve into Navajo history and arts and explore Navajo interactive museum in the Tubai city. See resources for more information. I, I read that as two Jima too. <laughs> <laughs> so I some reason saw two. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, you're right. To keep reading. Says, no, my okay. I mine says White Mountain. Okay, Apache. I can say Apache. We're good. Okay. <laughs> um, located in the East Central Arizona, the White Mountain Apache tribe presides over vast lands on the high desert that boasts world-class elk hunting, fishing, and other year-round outdoor recreation, such as skiing at the tribe's Sunrise Park Resort. Learn about the White Mountain Apache history, including the Apache Wars between 1849 and 1886 with the US Army, of course, we would have to fight each other, as well as their art and culture by visiting the Fort Apache Historic Park and the on-site White Mountain Apache Culture Center and Museum. Pretty good. Um, Salt River, Pima, Maracopa. Maracopa. Yeah, Maracopa. Maracopa. These two tribes from the Soan community within the Phoenix metropolitan area, where they cultivate a variety of crops and operate the extensive Salt River Entertainment District, a haven of shopping, dining, shows, and complete with baseball fields. Some use the spring training, a driving range for golfers in an indoor rainforest environment featuring a butterfly pavilion. So much to do there. Um, Tohono Odaham. That's also fine. known as the people <laughs> of the desert, the Tohono Odaham hosts numerous activities on, the, on their lands in the Southern Arizona. Visitors seeking to learn about the culture can enjoy exhibits and participate in ex educational programs at the Tohono Odono National nation, cultural center, and museum. Or they can pursue activities as diverse as stargazing at Kitt Peak National Observatory, one of the largest in the world, or check out the action at the Desert Diamond Casino. <laughs> I'm sorry. Of course, there's a casino <laughs> located in, in Tucson, uh, um, where am I? Uh, Phoenix West Valley and why? The Toho Odono also hosts an annual rodeo, which is in February, powwow in March, and crafts market in November. All right. I think we hit all those. going to let us go? The reason there's yep. a casino is the casinos are ran by the tribes, and that's how they make their money across the nation. No, that's why I thought it was funny, because, of course, we would have to hear about a casino. I thought we did everything. <laughs> All right, is this where you're at? It took me back here. Are you here? I was just going to say, like, I just went through everything and it won't let me go forward. It says, yeah, it won't let me go forward either. There's right. one for the visitor guidelines. That we Maybe the visitor. Oh, okay. What is visitor it? Visitor guidelines. All tribal lands operate under their own sovereign government and its own guidelines for visitors. Ceremonial areas and graveyards are restricted areas and are not open to the public. Alcohol is not tolerated except in designated areas such as the casinos. casinos. <laughs> Protecting the integrity of Arizona's tribal lands and ionic be natural beauty is more important than ever. Follow the seven principles when visiting. Plan ahead and prepare. Stick to trails. Take your trash. Leave what you find. Be careful with fire. Respect wildlife and respect other people. Very good. There you go. Um, Mine still says it. What the heck? Make sure you click on everything. I did. Okay. Um, I'll go make ahead sure, and Yeah, make sure you up. click on each of these, open them up, and then there. 
to um, more ways to experience American Indian culture, even more opportunities to learn about or engage with Arizona's American Indians can be found throughout the state in places as diverse as recreational areas, trading posts, a great option for purchasing traditional crafts, museums, and cultural centers. Information on some of these venues can be found in the following slides in the resources tab in the upper right hand corner. Oh, casinos. I love casinos. <laughs> it won't let me. It's like stuck. I had to go Why out and use a different yeah, browser. You can come back. Um oh gosh. Incognito, the way to go. Casino, suggesting a visit to a casino on tribal lands presents an interesting way to combine exciting nightlife and cultural exploration on a trip. These venues typically showcase fascinating works of art, architecture, and serve excellent American Indian cuisine. And some of them are incorporated into resorts. One example is Talking Stick Resort near Scottsdale which in addition is a world-class casino, contains one of the largest collections of American Indian artwork outside of a museum. More, I'm sure we all gonna focus on the artwork when we're at a casino, <laughs> but. More examples include Apache Gold Casino Resort, San Carlos, Casino Arizona, Scottsdale, We Co Pau uh, Casino Resort, Wild Horse Pass Casino, Gillow River Indian Community in Chandler, Bucky's, Bucky's really? Uh, <laughs> Yampa Casinos in Prescott, and Casino de Sol in Tuscan. Okay. Forts. The previously mentioned Fort Apache, the East Central Arizona, was the site of the conflict between some of the area's indigenous tribes and the U.S. Army as pioneers and settlers pushed westward. It is now located in Fort Apache Historic Park, where visitors can take a self-guided walking tour through old Fort Apache with over 20 buildings dating from 1870s through 1930s. They can explore petrographs nearby at the Kinishaba Ruins National Historic Landmark for a glimpse into the area's prehistory. If your clients find themselves out west near Lake Mead on the Colorado River, they can visit Fort Mo, uh, Mojo, uh, whose ruins serve as a reminder of the tension between American Indians and the new settlers. Today, the Fort Mo, Mojo people operate various recreation and entertainment venues in this area. Okay, hey, very good. Again, I appreciate you guys reading because it is kind of difficult. So thank you guys. Um, let's see. I would read if I could ever get on get on the site again. <laughs> <Get> caught up. <laughs> um, I, I now I'm still playing catch up. I keep freezing. I Me too. That's what it was doing it to me, and I had to open it in a different browser. I'm on a different browser, and now I can't even get back in. Like it won't even like I can't get in the. I'm on Travel Agent Academy, but it won't let me in the Arizona thing at all. Now, remember, it opens up. Make sure you have your pop-up blockers on because it opens up in a different window. So check that. Yeah, but I'm also having issues with the Zoom because of my internet. So it's like between the Academy freezing on me and the Zoom in and out. Yeah. I'm like still trying to play catch up. Oh, no. <laughs> well, we're recording um, it. So luckily you'll have um, must see museums. Don't forget the previously mentioned museum, Tohono O'Don Nation Cultural Center and Museum, and the White Mountain Apache Cultural Center and Museum, and the Navajo Nation Museum, and explore a Navajo Interactive Museum. Herd Museum. Herd Museum in Phoenix, showcasing the beauty and vitality of traditional contemporary American Indian art. This international, in, um, internationally recognized museum features world-class art collections and exhibits, exhibitations, excuse me, along with the unmatched festivals and educational programming dedicated to the achieve, uh, advancements of American Indian art. Mm -hmm. Airmen Museum. 
on the historical homeland of Chur. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank the you. The Ember Foundation and Museum explores and seeks to explain knowledge of the American Indians through research, education, and conservation. Museum of Northern Arizona and Flagstaff. This museum was founded in 1928 by a group of Flagstaff citizens to protect and preserve the natural and cultural heritage of Northern Arizona. It's evolved into a regional center of learning with collections, exhibits, educational programs, publications, and research projects that serves, that serves thousands of people each year. Okay. All right. Time for a pop quiz. Oh, oh God. So Girl. you've now finished this section. So now we're going to go to the Wild West. <clears throat> um, so I'll go ahead and start reading. And then if we want to volunteers again later, let me know. So uh, right. Wild West heritage. Um, wild landscapes like Monument Valley with its crimson mes mesas, towering sandstone buttes, have provided the setting for many a Western film. The entire region that became Arizona witnessed much of what actually happened on the American frontier, AKA the Wild West. So you have boom towns. Of particular interest are the boom towns that sprung up and in some cases soon de devolved into ghost towns after gold prospectors, silver miners, cattlemen, professional gamblers, Legendary outlaws and lawmen played out their lives. Some of these towns were preserved and rejuvenated and today offer excellent dining, historical culture venues, such as art galleries and theater to round out your client's day of sightseeing. Check out the dude ranches. See chapter three I want to go to a dude ranch. on Arizona's dude ranch, a great way to immerse clients in this lifestyle of what was once the wild west. Okay. So here we're going to have that um, available to you on chapter three. So we'll learn all about that. Tombstone. Everybody knows tombstone, right? So must see towns above oh, are a few must see Arizona towns whose preserved, restored, historic streets, um, ghost tours, uh, celebrations and reenactments of stirring events take visitors back in time. Tombstone, oh. Tombstone, south, east, south, southest of Tucson, a prosperous <laughs> silver mining town that hits its heyday in the late 1800s. Tombstone was the site of the in infamous OK Corral gunfight, where long simmering tensions between outlaw cowboys and the Earp brothers, aided by Doc Holliday, came to a dramatic head. Today, its historic courthouse, one of many preserved buildings, is a museum with exhibits describing the lives of Tombstone's colorful residents. Complete with such artifacts as an operating license for a brothel, an invitation to a hanging, stop by Boot Hill Cemetery to visit who those who made Tombstone their final resting place. You Does it really say an operating brothel? <laughs> it does. Does it really say that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm more interested in hanging things. They actually have them here in, 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 Ve in Vegas outside of Corum. So, okay. Bisbee on Arizona's southeast border with Mexico, a raucous uh, 1880s mining camp, and then a hippie haven 80 years later. Bisbee today is a quirky yet charming town with art galleries, museums, mine tours, shopping, dining, and a Wild West ambiance. The facades on many of its storefronts are the originals. A host of activities and festivals take place in Bisbee throughout the year. You have Prescott, north of Phoenix. The mountain town is, ooh, look how pretty, home to Whiskey Row, once lined with saloons frequented by the famous cowboys of the Wild West. Today, visitors can see several of these restored businesses, Charlotte Hall Museum, Dells of Watson Lake, and if they come during the July 4th weekend, attend the world's oldest annual rodeo. That's coming up. How about Oatman? This is pretty cool. I've gone here a few times. Um, Northwestern region. Iconic Route 66 runs across isolated mountainous terrain right into Oatman, which rose temporarily to prominence during a gold mining boom in 1915 to 17. 
Thanks to preserved remnants of the town and staged gunfights, visitors can relive its heyday if they don't get too distracted by the adorable donkeys that roam the streets freely. Do you guys see the picture? Yeah. You see the donkey? It is. It's it's pretty cool. Can you try backing out of can you imagine backing that car out of the donk with the donkey? <laughs> they come right up when to my the um, and everything. They're very friendly. So my dad and I, we went to um um South Dakota for Sturgis and we went to Custard State Park. Uh -huh. And bison, it, you have to imagine all these bikers for Sturgis. Right. And bison are just blocking the road and there's nowhere <laughs> to go. <laughs> they're just standing there looking at you like and it's their right away you, you know it's their home so they have donkeys too <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty cool so all right so the grand canyon historic village not exactly a boom town but the grand canyon historic village in the national park nevertheless in cups and encapsulates the days of earliest motor travel to the grand canyon during the 1910s Numerous businesses and hotels were built. Some of the architect, Mary E. J. Coulter, such um, as Hoppy House and Lookout Studio that today are national landmarks on account of their unique aesthetics, many incorporating American Indian design. Visitors can stroll through the museums featuring fascinating artifacts, purchase American Indian crafts. The village is also where the Grand Canyon's most popular hiking trail, Bright Angel, begins. All right, so we finished that section. Now, Route 66. Anybody ever driven Route 66? It's a pretty cool. No, but I, I watched want it on um on the like uh, YouTube or whatever. Some the guys uh, cars. It. I've done most the of movie it. Cars. At the end, they go up Route 66. Okay. All right, so it's oh, also called my Harley right? there. That's yeah, that's road. Road. Yeah. So it's Oatman to Lump Lumpton, also called the Main Street of America or the Mother Road. It's celebrated in a 1946 rhythm and blues song as the place to get your kicks. Route 66 mm -hmm. embodies a slice of Americana from a time when the road trips were all the rage and rock and roll was on the horizon. So Route 66, Roadside Americana, Route 66, which was the main um, way across the U.S. during the 1920s and 1950s, originally ran from Chicago to Santa Monica. It sparked the growth of many local businesses like motels and burger joints until much of it was replaced by interstate highways. Today, Arizona is where travelers can find the greatest number of remaining segments of this legendary roadway. A few famous vintage roadside highlights in Arizona include the Wigwam Motel. How cool is that? Made of mm -hmm. wigwam-shaped buildings, Holbrook. All right, you have Painted Desert Trading Post, established near Holbrook in the 1940s by the cattlemen from Texas. This trading post originally sold gasoline, American Indian rugs and jewelry, petrified wood and sundries. On occasion, aircraft would land nearby to refuel. Restored to its original state, the store remains the only building on a stre long stretch of scenic desert wilderness shown in this image. You have standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona, statue playing tribute to Take It Easy by the Eagles, complemented by a flatbed Ford. All right, how cool is that? Yeah. Hackberry I thought General you were singing for a minute more. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hackberry General Store, Tourism Information Post, and Souvenir Shop in the town of Hackberry. So pretty cool to take that drive. Giganticus Hedicus, a replica of an Easter Island head at Kingman Visitor Center. That's pretty cool. Snowcap Drive-In, Vintage Eatery in Seligman. That'd be fun. That looks like a fun place to go. Oops, sorry. Drive through Route 66 sign. This is in Kingman. I've never driven that. I go through Kingman all the time. I have to check that out. All right. And last, Peach Springs, gateway to the Grand Canyon Caverns, Grand Canyon West, and the Skywalk. Pretty cool. All right. Yeah. 
So places you'll go. Cutting across the northern third of the state, Route 66 can serve as a basis of an entire week-long itinerary. See the resources above. Goes through these major towns from east to west. All right, so next. So the places you'll go, Holbrook, located in the Painted Desert, Grand Canyon, and the Navajo Nation. Winslow, a town shaped by the American Indian culture and pioneers memorialized, uh, memorialized in the Eagle song, Take It Easy, and Flagstaff, a college town, ski area, and cultural hub surrounded by forests and mountains. Williams, gateway to the Grand Canyon. Seligman, situated at the beginning of the scenic drive that is the longest remaining stretch of Route 66. Kingman, home to Arizona Route 66 Museum and Route 66 Fest, proximity to the Grand Canyon. And last one is not popping up. Yep. Uh oh. Yep. Yep. I think it gave up on us. All um, yours loads, I'll read for you if you want. Okay. The places you'll go along the way, your clients can see the Petrified Forest National Park, Walnut Canyon, Luau Observatory, Sunset Crater Volcano National Monument, the Grand Canyon, and the former boomtown of Oatman. Perfect. Now let's make it a game. If your clients are contemplating a road trip, direct them to Route 66 Check-In Challenge, where for each site visit, they receive an entry to receive prizes. So that's kind of fun. So fun. let them know. Yeah, take, you know, kind of like the, you know, I see with my, you know, eye or whatever, you know. So now they can <laughs> play with the Route 66 scavenger hunt like. So that's kind of cool. Maybe we'll have to try that, Linda, huh? Yeah. All right. So Again, congratulations on that. We finished that portion. Now we have contemporary arts and fine arts, and then we're going to have the exam. And then we'll let somebody else move on to reading the next one. Contemporary arts and fine art. Not surprisingly, Arizona's wide array of breathtaking landscapes bathed in beautiful sunlight most of the year has caught the attention of many visual artists, other creative spirits. The result is a wide variety of artistic experiences. Huh? On the last slide, my uh, Zoom went out on me again. Is there, what was after Hedicus? Oh. Hedicus is dry. Um, the drive. Drive in. The drive? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so American Indian art, the first to capture the colors and textures of Arizona's natural beauty were, of course, the land's first inhabitants. Places to view and purchase American Indian art from traditional craft to contemporary painting, sculpture, and works in other media were detailed in the section visiting tribal lands. Among the most famous venues for appreciating the full scope of American Indian art is the Heard Museum. Although Talking Stick Resort near Scottsdale also has an impressive collection. Visitors will find the trading posts and culture centers on tribal lands offering excellent opportunities to purchase crafts from baskets to textiles to jewelry. See resources for more information. You have the artist enclave, enclaves, 1940s, present. Non-native artists in search of inspiration began arriving in large numbers in Arizona in the 1940s. Many set up residences clustering together in picturesque towns throughout the state, and a few of these include Sedona. If you guys haven't been to Sedona, you definitely have to go. We go at least every year. One of the first, perhaps most famous of Arizona's artist enclaves, Sedona, North Central Arizona, is a cultural wellness hub surrounded by beautiful rock formations, swirling centers of energy known as vortexes. Among its many arts-related activities, Sedona Pline Air Festival in October, a week of events including outdoor painting sessions where the public can see landscape painters at work. Yeah. You have Sedona Photo Fest, June, a series of presentations on techniques and gadgetry, Recent topics have included night photography and capturing nat nature with a smartphone. 
First Friday in the galleries, events where galleries open their doors to the public for special exhibits. Sedona International Film Festival in February, featuring independent films, and then Red Rocks Musical Festival late summer, celebration of classic music. You have the Tiapia Paki Arts and Shopping Village. It's pretty cool. It's a really neat um, shopping center. Authentically fashioned around the traditional Mexican village, this Sedona landmark originally conceived as an artist community today affords visitors the opportunity to view artists and artisans at work, as well as purchase stunning original pieces from jewelry to paintings to home decorative items. This bee is our hippie town, right? Not only a former mining town, colorful past, but Bisbee, Southeast Arizona, also is thriving art community with Bohemian vibe. Some signature events include the Blues in Bisbee in September, popular music event benefiting Easter Seal Lake Foundation. And then Return of the Turkey Vultures in March, a welcome home party of migrating turkey vulture, bringing together turkey and vulture music, kids activities, a parade with giant puppets, skits, Stilt walkers, drum circle, and more. That sounds like a lot of fun. I don't know about the turkey yeah. vultures. <laughs> <laughs> and then Tubac. Uh, Franciscan Church that is today viewed as a striking example of mission era architecture. Tuma Kakori, together with the ruins of Spanish Presidio, impart um, a historic dimension to the Southern Arizona arts community. It began as an art school and has expanded to encompass galleries of an and an art center for exhibiting works by local artists, staging concerts and film screenings. screenings. Its most famous festivals include Tubac Festival of the Arts in February, Southern Arizona's longest running art festival, creates a unique artisan village in the historic village of Tubac. Art Walk, spring and fall, featuring open studios and special gallery shows. All right, come on, come on, mouse. All right, cities for culture connoisseurs. Arizona's pros prosperity has greatly enhanced the art scene in these major cities. Here are just a few key examples, and for further details, go to resources. So you have Tucson, the vibrant hometown to the University of Arizona, not only is where American Indian, Spanish, Mexican, and Anglo cultures converge, but it is also a UNESCO city of gastronomy. Here, visitors can do everything from attending a rodeo to touring century-old Spanish missions to joining in a grassroots All Souls procession. Part art exhibition, part parade that collectively and creatively expresses mourning and loss. Tucson is also where to find colorful street art, beautiful botanical gardens, the splendid San Javier Mission, as well as the Arizona History Museum. My mom is from Tucson. Oh, cool. Phoenix, Arizona's capital city, is home to various arts organizations, including Arizona Opera and the Ballet Theater of Phoenix. Flagstaff, a college town, Flagstaff has its own symphony orchestra. In addition to being a key recreation area, as previously discussed, the top in snow. And then Scottsdale, beautiful place, luxurious destination, over 100 art galleries. Scottsdale also is the site of Frank Lloyd Wright's Desert Home and Architecture Studio, Taliesin um, West. Beautiful. All right, so we've finished that, that time. Now test time. Everybody ready? Did you stop getting all the answers? No. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, guys. Again, that was a tough one. So again, teamwork, right? All yeah. right. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. The answers are in there. So we have one more chapter. Are you guys good to go for the last one? Finish it up, get our certificate. Yes, do it. Do it. All right, so Arizona's. I'll catch up to you guys at some point. Okay, I'll record. I'm recording it. So, chapter three Arizona's wealth in food, wellness, and lodging. Focus on good food, health, and hospitality will enhance any trip. And in this chapter, you will learn how to put the finishing touches on an amazing vacation in Arizona. 
Or you may decide to make one of these elements the focus of an entire trip. Dude ranches, wellness retreats, vortexes, places known for their physical, spiritual, regenerative powers. How about top American Indian and Mexican restaurants, yum, wineries, and a city recognized the world over for gastronomy are all a part of the picture. So let's get started, get our final exam, get our certificates, and again, appreciate you guys hanging out with me. You want me to read it all? Anybody want to read? You want any of us to read, Marnie? Sure, go ahead. This okay. is my favorite and my Arizona's least favorite part. Arizona's Wealth and Food, Wellness, and Lodging. Introduction. The environment in Arizona brims with inspiring vistas and a wealth of other life-enhancing elements, such as savory fresh food, along with swirling centers of restorative energy, aka vortexes, inspiring sunrises, and healing waters. Your client's sense of well-being will also be supported by a wide range of imaginative accommodations geared toward restful sleep and days of discovery. Yay. Oh, sorry. I can't make it. I was trying to make it go to max. <laughs> <laughs> Please review all content before proceeding. Oops. What did I miss? Hold on. Where's my thing opening up? All right. Uh -oh. I'm trying. I'm trying. What am I missing? Um, there's, you're supposed to go to itinerary. Right here, down here. Out. Okay. Yeah. That's why you I should. Uh, it up. There it goes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where is it? Okay. Itinerary to check out. Please consult the resources tab for itinerary suggestions put together by Visit Arizona's Travel Experts. They are grouped by theme. Um, Arizona's culinary scene. This is my favorite. A top trending culinary destination. Arizona has everything going for it. Farm to table freshness, a fusion of local and traditional flavors, gastronomic innovation and dining settings that range from food trucks to dessert terraces to elegant restaurants helmed by award-winning chefs. It is even home to one of the two U.S. cities to have been recognized by UNESCO as a city of gastro gastronomy. Tuscan, the state also has over 120 wineries and meat three major flourishing wine regions and numerous craft breweries to enhance visitors seeking perfection in a bottle. Oh, that's my town. I've, I'm hungry too. I've been training since eight o'clock this morning, so I haven't eaten breakfast or lunch. So this is going to be a little tough today. All right. All right. Array of Look at that. Flavors. The state's rich history has given it a legacy of cooking styles, each drawing upon district Distinct savory flavors. Ba, ba, ba. American Indian, a now bounty you get of to read the Indian names. What? Oh, now you oh, get yeah. to read the Indian names. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can take over once I get there. Quick next. A bounty of American Indian eateries truly sets Arizona oh, apart. Beauty destination. While corn, beans, and squash, referred to as the three sisters. Our staples in this cuisine, food enthusiasts should look for lamb, red chilies, sorry, I can't, chola, buds, acorns, and fry bread as well. They will also discover American Indian versus, versions of foods many Americans generally associate with Mexico, like tacos and tostadas. From tribal lands to urban centers, American Indian restaurants can be found throughout the state, including several that have received special recognition. To learn about some of these restaurants, click on the map. Multi-tribal. American Indian cuisine, Hope, Hopi tribe. Hopi Cultural Center, Second Mesa, Hopi. The Hopi Center has both a hotel and restaurant where yeah, visitors enjoy meals with traditional Hopi recipes such as something. To, I can't. TC on Gava, red chili beans with ground beef, Oh, geez. But a Tessa corn hominy cooked with pinto beans and Hopi pastata fry bread topped with refried beans. All right. Sounds my... delicious. Uh -huh. The View Restaurant, American Indian Cuisine, Navajo Nation, Hogan Family Restaurant, Tuba City, Navajo, located next to the Explore Navajo Interactive Museum. I got disconnected. I'm like, sorry, for, sorry, guys. Oh, it's okay. And Tuba City Trading Post, this restaurant serves a little of everything, including Navajo-inspired dishes such as mutton stew and Navajo tacos made with fry bread. 
The View Restaurant Monument Valley Navajo, set among the stunning red rock formations of Monument Valley Navajo Tribal Park, the View Restaurant at the View Hotel has received recognition for its green chili stew. Featured in Esquire's 25 Best Bites to Eat in the USA, its Navajo chefs also prepare red chili pork po posole, posole, mutton stew, posole, yeah, mutton stew, and Navajo, thank you, tacos, among other fare. Yeah. All right. And American oh, Indian Cuisine, yeah. White Mountain Apache Tribe, Cafe. Gazhole White River White Mountain Apache, located in East Central Arizona, the White Mountain Apache. Are you laughing at me? Oh, I thought somebody was laughing. <laughs> located in Central Arizona, the White Mountain Apache Tribe's high desert is teeming with life, boasting world-class elk hunting and fishing, providing the perfect ingredients for native dishes. Only here will you find Apache trout, one of Arizona's two native trout species and the official state trout or state fish. One great place for sampling the region's bat region's fair is Cafe Gazho. Here, ancestral knowledge and exciting cooking techniques produce favorites like Nadaban, white mountain Apache cornbread, squash stew, red chili stew, acorn stew, and espresso-based drinks, and cowboy coffee, and more, all prepared in an open kitchen. Cowboy coffee. <laughs> I like my mix. It's made coffee. with chicory. Cowboy yeah. coffee is made with chicory. Oh, cool. Hmm. Hmm. We'll have to try that. American Indian cuisine. Gila dinner? River community, Indi community Indian. It's Gila. Hi. <laughs> wild horse pass handler gia river community is that what she said gia? no it's actually gila the g is silent it's oh my gosh. gosh it's fine <laughs> arizona's only triple a five diamond award and four five star award winning restaurant okay is where chef d cuisine Ryan Swanson creates masterpieces drawing forth the essence of the Akemal O Atham and Peshaw tribes from locally farmed ingredients such as Ramona's farm, tepary beans, and guy whatever. Oh, mesquite, mesquite roasted and cracked corn and 60-day Pima corn. There are also Arizona origin offerings like Peterson honey, crow's dairy goat cheese, yum, and Renee wines. Yeah, I'm butchering everything. <laughs> For a second, I thought you said Ron Swanson. <laughs> that no, rhymed. It looked good. Who knows what I said? <laughs> American Indian cuisine, Tahono O Adham Nation, Fry Bread House. This is my place. Um, <laughs> Phoenix, Tahono O Adham, family run fry bread house, is a vital part of Phoenix's American Indian community and serves tacos, sweet fry breads with a variety of delicious toppings, as well as red chili beef stew. How did you say that? Pasole? Pasole. Pasole, and much more. Yay. Thanks. All right. And multi tribal, does that open? So, okay. Is that all it? Right. That's it. Please review all content. What did I miss? Maybe oh, five. Did we do there, it? Opened up. Oh, okay. Confluence of multi tribal flavors. Courtyard Cafe at Heard Museum, Phoenix, multiple tribal influences. Considered an essential part of the museum experience at this renowned institution for American Indian art and culture, dining at the Courtyard Cafe treats visitors to locally sourced ingredients, yielding such dishes as drink, culture salad. Tipari bean hummus and its famous pasole, hominy, and meat soup, recently featured in Bon Appetit. Okay. All right. Next. Mexican cuisine. Many Arizona towns have long had cultural ties with their southern neighbors, Mexico, from the festivities surrounding holidays like the Day of the Dead to local cuisine. Authentic Mexican restaurants are 
ubiquitous in Arizona and the cuisine has made its way onto so many menus that visitors don't have to look hard to sample it. But there are ways to narrow your client's search. More information on the topic can be found in resources. Hi. Many, oh, is there? Is that it? I thought that was the same thing, right? Um, let me see. There we go. Oh. Head to an iconic eatery, El Chero Cafe, legendary birthplace of the Chimichanga, is the nation's oldest Mexican restaurant continually run by the same family located in Tucson. El Chero has been praised by the New York Times and Nation Restaurant News, which named it one of America's 50 most iconic restaurants. Mama. Yum. Mex try a local gem, Silvana Salcido Esparza, a James Beard Award nominated chef runs the beloved Barrio Cafe in downtown Phoenix, where authentically permeates the menu with such popular items as cochinita, pibel, chilies, mm. and um, nagata, mm. and chef's tableside guacamole. Not only does chef Silvana Gamar rec recognition for creating some of the best Mexican cuisine in the region and nationally, but she is also admired for her support of the arts demonstrated by the stunning outdoor murals she has sponsored in her neighborhood, including one on her own restaurant. Oh, oh salsa festivities. Friendly Sofford is home to the annual Salsa Fest in September and more events can be found in Phoenix, Maricopa, and Tucson. Tequila time. <laughs> Shot. Yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. Me Mexican cuisine, tequila time. Mexico's most celebrated spirit, tequila, has also found a happy home in Arizona. The Salud Lounge in T Tucson's JW Marriott Star Ass Resort and Spa. Ooh, I was okay. Serves more than 140 premium rec tequilas several infused with fresh ingredients like chilies and pineapple. For a variety of Mexican premium liqueurs, stop in at La Hacienda by Richard Sandoval. Oh, wait a second. At the mm -hmm. Fairmont Scottsdale Princess and try the snake bite flight in a, a tasting of Sotol Mezcal, Mezcal and tequila served on a plate with a genuine rattlesnake head and tail. <laughs> there are also plenty of tequila friendly festivals to go around. With Cinco de Mayo comes the Agave Heritage Festival at Hotel Congress in Tucson. The fun continues in spring with Arizona's Phoenix, Arizona's Taco Festival. I'm sorry, don't, 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 don't. I gotta take a picture of that. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Hold on. I'm I'm so sorry. I just no worries. Okay. Go ahead. I'm going to, I'm actually going to Arizona next week. So oh, cool. I'm going to check it out. <laughs> no. Huh? Oh, no. All right. Okay. okay. Next. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Cowboy Ranch. Sorry. I was thinking of the tequila. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, I can take over. <laughs> Even if your clients aren't staying at a dude ranch. More on this topic in accommodations, they can still dine like a cowboy in the open air. Here are two places non-guests can check out. Tank Verde Ranch, located east of downtown Tucson on the edge of Sagaro National Park. This all-inclusive guest ranch hosts a popular cowboy cookout on Wednesday and Saturday nights. The barbecued meal features grilled beef, ribs or steak, chicken, and fresh fish served with homemade cornbread, fresh fruit, salad, and more, usually followed by line dancing. All right. Oh, fun. Okay. Bumblebee Ranch, about 60 miles north of Phoenix in the town of Mayer, this working ranch, guest ranch, and horse motel offers a group-focused dining experience. Make a reservation at least a week in advance and then select your group's menu, such as a grilled ribeye steak, chicken, or salmon dinner served with a baked potato, corn on the cob, dinner rolls, and apple pie, and maybe add a cowboy activity like a two-hour cattle drive. All right. Wow. Okay. Finish reading. Let me keep going. Um, it's up to you or Jason or me. Who wants to read? I don't. I don't okay. care. 
You can go ahead and do another one. An extraordinary culinary success, Tucson. Tucson has earned a place on the world culinary stage by focusing locally. It won recognition by UNESCO as a city of gastronomy, gastronomy for being a model economy based on the art, science, and process of eating good food. Local experts specifically credit Tucson's 4,000 plus years of agricultural history in the region. Its confluence of cultures, mm -hmm. The huge breadth of its food-related businesses, cultural celebrations, festivals, activism, and research that exists here today. All right. Um, visitors can expect to find nearly every type of international cuisine in Tucson, along with the American fare, served both casually and elegantly. Particularly noteworthy is the wide variety of settings in which food can be enjoyed, from food trucks to garden patios to historic buildings, no restaurants with to restaurants with stunning dessert and mountain views. See resources. Pictured is it's an example of artistic culinary offerings by Don Guava, Guara Barrio Bread, who won the James Beard Outstanding Baker Award How in 2018. Cool is that? That's pretty yeah. cool. More foodie towns. Many other cities and towns in Arizona boast impressive dining scenes, check out resources for links for the following. Venus, including vegan restaurants, the Fresh Foodie Trail of Heritage Farms, Sedona, eateries with legendary food and ambiance, Flagstaff, finding big city culinary elegance in this outdoorsy college town. Tempe, foods for all taste buds in the hometown of Arizona State University. Image taken at Queen Creek Olive Mill, part of the Fresh Foodie Trail. Yum, who's hungry? Yeah, me. All right. the wine oh, yeah. scene. Now, now you get your cocktail after. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, winning wine scene, culinary scene. Arizona's amazing assortment of terrains just happens to include areas where soil elevations and temperatures are perfect for grape growing. Arizona can now boast it has three distinct American Viticulture areas, AVA, as the Verde Valley AVA was designed, designated by the federal government. TTB, late December 2021, established vineyards are planting more unique white and red grape varieties originating from countries like Greece, France, Italy, and Spain. These regions are found in the southern and north central parts of the state and include. Okay, does it, did it go on to that? I didn't see. Okay. Oh, it just said, I think it just wants okay. you to. Yeah. So, Sanoeta, Elgin, southeast of Tucson. Reminiscent of Italy's major wine growing zones in Tuscany, Sanoeta produces Sauvignon Blanc, Cabernet Sauvignon Mal. Okay, I'm not very good at <laughs> I'm not very good. <laughs> That's okay. Like, hey, I don't mean either. <laughs> Malbec, Merlot, and more. It's telling sangria. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wilcox, east of Tucson, high above the desert terrain and heat. This area benefits from an average rainfall of 15 to 20 inches and soil rich in mountain minerals to produce almost 80% of Arizona's wine grapes. And it is home to some very progressive wineries run on all solar power. Hmm. Verde Valley, two hours north of Phoenix, located in the Red Rock County countryside and lush canyons of northern central Arizona, the Verde Valley region produces award-winning Arizona wines. Volcanic soil, hot days, and cool nights make this region ideal for producing grapes with thicker skins, deeper colors, and more flavor. Yay. Mm-hmm. Wine tours, vineyards, wineries, and tasting rooms offer group and private tours, many with shuttles from Tucson, Scottsdale, and Sedona. And if your clients would like to devote a whole day to exploring an Arizona wine region, you can direct them to the three itineraries outlined in our brochure, Savoring Arizona, see resources. For example, in the Verde Valley, they can start their day in Cottonwood, enjoying a red velvet waffle breakfast, yum, and then kayak along the Verde River to Alcantara Vineyards for a wine tasting, and that's just for starters. Each itinerary offers recommendations for wine tasting and activities like cave exploration and apple picking, in addition to where and what to eat 
throughout the day and where to stay. Wow, that sounds tempting, huh? Yeah. Yummy. I know. <laughs> That's, yeah. Arizona Wine Trail Passport. Arizona boasts more than 120 wineries and tasting rooms across the state. Get started on our interactive tour of Arizona wine country with this mobile passport and earn prizes along the way. See resources. Hmm. And fun things to do. Look at that. Now they have two little games to play. <laughs> hmm, that's that. All right. Great festivals. If taking a turn at grape stomping appeals to your clients have fun have their trip coincide with one of arizona's many great festival the harvest fest which is held every july at sanoita vineyards or the annual great crush festival at arizona hops and vines in september also in so in, they keep saying that word also <laughs> in sanoita are just some of the events where food and music add to a foot stomping good time did you guys ever see that Lucy show where they were stomping on the on the grapes? I can uh, read the next part. <laughs> All right. So craft beers. Mm. Oh, you know, here's my spot. Okay. They were for craft beers. <laughs> beers. They still don't have food, so maybe it won't hurt as hard. <laughs> Arizona <laughs> culinary scene, flavorful craft beer. <laughs> Microbreweries are extremely popular in Arizona. Your clients will find everything from big, bold flavors to tasty combinations of subtle notes. Tell them to look for their favorite varietal made with prickly pear cactus fruit, the state citrus. Yum. From college town beers, bars to legendary saloons, your clients can find something to quench their desire for great taste. For excellent options, send them to Flagstaff, Lumberyard Brewery, Brewing, Dark Sky Brewing, Phoenix, Arizona Wilderness Brewing Company, Barn Star Brewing, Greenwood Brewing, Brewing, Superstitious, Superstition Meadery, Tucson and Southern Arizona, Barrio Brewing, Borderlands Brewing, Tombstone Brewing Company, Lake Havasu City, Mud Shark. See resources for more information, including details on distilleries and cideries. Like cider too. Yum. You have right. finished with these. I think we're finished with that, right? Hey, I think so. Oh, oh, All right. Congratulations, guys. We're almost done. Arizona's Ways Sports Wellness. You want to read now? Yes. Okay. I need some wellness in my life now. <laughs> and I, I need some food. of this. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys, again for hanging out. It's it's a long one, but we're gonna get. Marty, can you go? What was the? Um, it's in the Marty, chat. What yeah. order was it in again? It's uh, heard the museum. The answers are in the chat. Heard, yeah, the chat, answers are in the chat. chat. It's heard Gila Chimichanga Mural and UNESCO. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank oh, you. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah. Right. Diana stays on it. Arizona's way towards wellness. Thank a you, Diana. Well, a popular well. Oh, um, do I do I continue? Yes. Or anything? Else? Okay. Yeah, we gotta Wait, get going. I <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, I'm not gonna ask who's lost. Here's Ruth. Just send it in the chat. A popular wellness destination. Arizona has everything from vortexes and hot springs to retreat centers, to great spots for early morning sun salutations throughout the state. A whole vacation can be planned around wellness, but as you will see, there are many ways to work in a few moments to nourish mind and body as your client travel, as your clients travel about pursuing all sorts of interests. All right. Arizona's way towards the wellness menu. In the picture, walking through a labyrinth, a wellness activity at the Mirava, Mirava, Arizona Resort and Spa. Oh, lovely. The top cities for vortexes. Perhaps the most famous of Arizona's spa and wellness destination is Sedona, with its many vortexes, places where the earth seemingly seems especially alive, with energy believed to be conducive to well being. But other areas, like the environs of Lake Havasu City have their share of them as well in different surroundings, but just as beautiful. Activities can vary at vortexes, but they usually involve yoga and meditation. Vortexes are also popular sites for weddings, rites of passages, and end-of-life ceremonies. Yeah, 
And it's and again, if you go to Sedona, they'll give you like a map that has like all the rock formations and the vortexes that you can go to. So it's pretty cool. Huh. Sedona, the iconic red <laughs> rock formation surrounding Sedona in north central Arizona, beckon the wellness the wellness minded with their sheer beauty and the opportunities they afford for hiking, biking, and nature viewing. Those on, on a spiritual quest will also want to tap into the area's vortexes, which the Yavapai, Yavapai people recognize as the creative force of the Great Mother, and which are spread out over 22 miles. Among the best known vortexes are Airport Mesa, Cathedral Rock, Bell Rock, and Boynton Canyon. And many believe that the chapel of the Holy Cross, mm. built into red rock buttes within the Coconino, Coconino National Park, is situated on one. And that's that's really cool. The Chapel of the Holy Cross. It's really beautiful. So make sure you check that out and you get a light a candle in there and stuff. So um, it's it's a definite um, sightseeing um, place to go. So. Yeah. All right. So Permits are usually required to visit these ends. So your clients may want to arrange a workshop slash tour with a spiritual guide mm -hmm. who will not only make arrangements, but also work with them to leverage the benefits of the best vortex suited to their goals. Some exude an upflow, parentheses, rejuvenating energy moving up and out the earth, others an inflow calming energy flowing back into the earth round out a wellness day all right uh, yes first of all resume round out a wellness day sedona yes. takes care of its wellness visitors with an extensive infrastructure of resorts healthy restaurant restaurants resorts again day spas and activities from outdoor recreation to wine tasting to art galleries and shopping and including day trips to places like the Grand Canyon. Very good. Next. All right, Lake Havasu. Lake Havasu City. Have your water loving clients explore Lake Havasu City, located on the large lake form formed by the Colorado River. If they are seeking inspiration, rejuvenation, and an overall sense of uplift, the city and its environment boasts five vortexes, with the one at the Boyod Swim Area and Rotary Community Park, observing or offering an aquatic dimension to the experience. Here, white sandy beaches mingle with breathtaking red rock mountains and swaying palm trees for a unique setting. The Cavasu City, in general, is a recreational lover's paradise for everything from kayaking to skateboarding to yoga, and the community offers a variety of healing programs connected to the Vortex at Rotary Community Park. Next Good. page. Yeah, finish right. reading this. How about hot springs? Oh, are you okay to finish? Yeah. Okay. I just lost myself. Uh, oh, there you go. Hot springs. <laughs> I almost went to the wrong one. Arizona's way towards wealth, wellness, the hot springs section. A natural spa experience can be found in the hot springs of Arizona wildlands. Your client can stop in at some of these for a few hours, while other hot springs destinations have campsites where they can stay and sleep under the stars. And then there are resorts that have been built around these national or natural treasures. Following are a few suggestions. Always be sure to check conditions with more available and resources. On to the next slide. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Arizona Hot Springs at Lake Med Recreation Area. This pool is tucked inside a slot canyon and is reachable via a boat ride on the Colorado River or a 2.5 mile height. A campsite is located nearby. Let me go on to the next slide. Castle Hot Springs, a luxury, a luxury resort in the Bradshaw Mountains, north of Phoenix. It, that is home to the hottest 120 degrees Fahrenheit, non-volcanic natural spring in the world, first enjoyed by the area's Apache and 
Yavapai, Yavapai people. That, that's, no one said those kids should go there, I think. The El Dorado hot springs, west of Phoenix, these underground springs offer a rustic experience with several options, public or private, soaking zones, tiny clawfoot bathtubs or stone pools available by the hour or as part of an overnight stay on the campgrounds. Why did I turn my voice into that? That was not a good right? <laughs> I definitely want to go there. All right. And now then the, the spa, spa resort. <sighs> Castle Hot Springs was mentioned in the section on hot springs, but if you're looking for additional high-end accommodations, consider this sampling of luxury, of luxury properties selected by an <clears throat> official Arizona tourism expert for being the best in various categories. <clears throat> Meditation, boulders, resorts and spa, carefree Arizona, desert inspired treatments, the Ritz Carlton Dove Monument Marana, innovative offerings, Fairmount Scottsdale Princess, ah, yes, the princess, well and being spa Scottsdale, iconic Arizona views, sanctuary resorts and spa, Paradise Valley, Lush experience, Mirabal, Arizona, Resort and Spa, Tucson. Back to the submit. All right. And I believe that should them be all. all. I think they hit yeah. them all, right? No. I think we missed the wellness. Um, oh, we did? Yeah, wellness retreats and sessions. Oh. I can't, I can't log in on my, I don't know why my team is I'm, not walking. I'm my pretty internet. sure. I was able to go through it. Hold on, oh, go previous. Yeah. Oh, I think we did miss it because I got up to get food after watching all that food, <laughs> and I came back and you were somewhere I was not. So Where I went through at? the wellness, but I don't think we did. Oh, I, I, I think I actually did skip that. Yeah, I apologize. Wellness retreats and sessions, practicing yoga and other wellness techniques in the beautiful outdoors might be a dream come true for your health conscious clients in Arizona, considered by many yogis, yogis <laughs> as the most spiritual state in the United States. You can easily arrange a multi-day retreat or for multi-day retreats or sessions lasting several hours in beautiful surroundings or recommend inspiring spots where your clients can practice on their own. Resorts, centers, campsites, and other spaces dedicated to wellness can be found through wild states, especially in mountain and desert areas. Following are just a few examples of the many options available. Next. All right, so retreat, retreat centers. centers. Blistopia retreats located, this voice, <laughs> in the mountain resorts near Peoria, just north of Phoenix. These top retreats include luxurious accommodations and healthy meals in the serene settings where guests can totally unplug and focus on wellness goals. Among its many offerings are yoga classes, sound baths, what are those? Meditation, workshops, hiking, hot tubbing, swimming, infrared sauna therapy, day trips to Sedona, support Texas, my hungry stomach, or to the Sonorona. <laughs> desert for yoga, as well as private one-on-one -on -one sessions for more massage, healing touch therapies, Reiki, past life regressions, which I heard is quite interesting and scary for some, and more. The retreats, which typically last two to four days, are often orchestrated around things like healing, serenity, and celebrating love, or they can be customized for very, for different groups clubs, retreats, and workshops. Gateway Cottage Wellness Warning, Center. Warning, there is a pop quiz at the end of this one. Understood. Thank you. Gateway Cottage Wellness Center, led by Sedona's local spiritual instructors and by master teachers and shamans from around the world. The center's retreats and workshops offers guests a uniquely personalized experience. Workshops offer guests a uniquely personalized experience. I read that twice. Workshops 
running anywhere from one to five hours, focused on aspects such as breath works, sound therapy, what is that? And shamanic drumming initiation among the red rocks. Retreats can last from one day to an entire week, be customized for individuals and group, and include spiritualistic or spiritual holistic health transformative and couples program among others those all right so go ahead and read yoga on the go yes yoga on the go if your clients can carve out the time for retreats or yoga or workshops chances are they will be happy to work a few <laughs> sun salutations into an early morning <clears throat> or drive on the mountaintop to witness a spectacular sunrise. Here are some recommendations they can try depending on their location. Sedona, an easy hike along the Baldwin Loop Trail in Sedona offers, by, offers views of Cathedral Rock, a popular vortex site along the way, and closes and onto Scottsdale. Scott Still, the moderate 3.6 modern or the moderate 3.6 mile round trip sunrise peak trail in the McDowell Mountains affords a chance to watch the sun illuminate four peaks and camelback. Why is that? Why does that look like salsa? I'm I'm, I'm going to to the sun right now. <laughs> Tucson hikers can park at the base of Sentinel Peak and walk up the and walk up before the gates open at 7 a.m. Those going by car can take the Cactus Forest Loop at Saguda, Saguda Mount National Park, which featured a paved eight-mile trail with scenic pullouts. All right. On to the next one. All right. I think now we yeah, can finish, right? Let's see. Yep. Yay. All right. Next. Pop quiz, guys. Yay. Recording. So again, congratulations, everybody. We're doing the last one, which is inspiring accommodations. Near each of the Arizona's main attractions, there tends to be a wealth of accommodation choices, which span from big name hotel motel brands to unique properties with local roots, many geared toward helping guests enjoy the beauty of the land. The section on wellness mentioned spas and luxury resorts near hot springs, deserts, and other areas throughout the state, while the previous chapter mentioned lodging mm -hmm. options and entertainment complexes on tribal lands. This section will offer an overview of accommodations at the Grand Canyon, including a selection of dude ranches that work with travel agents, both offering guests a special connection with the outdoors, details including property recommendations beyond the examples provided here can all be found in the links under resources above, okay? All right, so inspiring accommodation menu. So you have the Grand Canyon campsites, upscale lodges, historic inns. Let's take a look at that. So Grand uh -huh. Canyon and historic inn. So in the south of the Grand Canyon, you're gonna have the South Rim um, is easily accessible from Flagstaff, Williams and Tucsonic, Tucson with their wide array of accommodations, including campsites that can help arrange adventure tours. Example, Grand Canyon, Williams, KOA, Journey. Some outdoor enthusiasts might prefer camping or staying in a lodge either within or on the edge of the canyon to maximize their time as a natural world wonder. Note these facilities often require reservations four months to a year in advance. So keep that in mind, guys, when you're making reservations for your clients. The North Rim, historic rustic option in the more isolated North Rim is the Grand Canyon Lodge, a campground with camper facilities and general store also available. Additional campgrounds, lodging options, and stores are available at the Jacob Lake Inn year-round approximately 45 miles north outside the entrance to the park. And then last is the West End, West Rim, home to the Skywalk. Okay, that's pretty cool. It's a glass bottom. Uh, the West Rim offers such accommodations as um, Hualapai Ranch at the Rim or Hualapai Lodge located on Route 66, an hour from the Rim. A one-day Grand Canyon whitewater raft adventure is available through Hualapai River Runners. Havasupai, uh, Havasu Falls Campground includes sites for tent camping plus Grand Canyon Caverns Inn and Havasupai, again, I apologize, Lodge. 
The latter is scheduled to reopen in May of 2023. Hikes to the fabulous turquoise colored falls cuts across primeval terrain, terrain, making them challenging, but very rewarding in the end. A bucket list activity for many permits are required, okay? So keep that in mind when you're booking for your clients. Um, dude ranches, okay, this is fun, right? Only about 20% of Arizona's land is developed, leaving vast open spaces where visitors can experience the old Western way of life, from horseback riding and cattle drives to gazing up at the stars at night. At its guest ranches, aka dude ranches, located throughout the state, many of them originated as family-operated working ranches that go back generations. All right, oops. Uh, legend. So you have dude ranches, um, boomtown, each color indicates the yeah. location, cities. All right. So dude ranches. Today, they typically offer all inclusive experiences for all ages and all the modern amenities to make a stay comfortable, if not downright luxurious. Along with hiking and learning to lasso, guests can op op often enjoy yoga, spa services, as well as cookouts and gourmet meals. Following our few examples of dude ranches, many of which work with travel agents, but be sure to check when booking. More information on all sorts of properties is located under resources. Select the green marker to learn more about the dude ranches. Hover over each of the icons to find out which cities, boom towns, and nature sites are nearby. All right. So Monument Valley, Painted Desert, Grand Canyon, please, please, please. Oakman, Lake Havasu. So we'll start here, Stagecoach Trails Guest Ranch. Uh, 42 guests welcomes travelers from around the world in the Mojave Desert of Northwest Arizona, one hour away from the nearest town. Along with participating in ranch activities, guests can try various levels of horseback riding from easy scenic rides to challenging ones in the mountains, as well as overnight rides. This family-run property is fully wheelchair accessible, includes oversized themed rooms, a frontier lodge, pool and hot tub, and a southwestern Hualapai dining room with a beautiful courtyard. Um, Prescott's there, Sedona's there, Flagstaff is there. This is Kai L. Bar Guest Ranch. Uh, 25 guests listed on the National Register of Historic Places, Kai El Bar is an authentic, intimate Western dude ranch just over an hour northwest of Phoenix in Wickenburg, Arizona. Ranch is nestled in the foothills of Bradshaw Mountains on the banks of the Hasayampa River in the spectacular Sonoran Desert. Here, your clients will feel like wranglers as they groom their own horses, saddle up, oops, morning and afternoon rides, and have a go at cattle penning. Uh, Bumblebee Ranch. Also featured in Arizona's culinary scene yes, under an array of array of flavors. Bumblebee Ranch, up to 21 house guests plus campers, just north of Phoenix, comprises campsites for tents and RVs, as well as guest house with pool and a cabin, full kitchen and laundry room. Activities include guided trail rides, cattle drives, cowboy meals, which can also be reserved by non-guests. Weddings can also be arranged. Once you know your client's lodging preference, check to see if this ranch works with travel agents. All right, and then Cherry Creek Lodge. Yum. Um, mm -hmm. Eight rooms and suite serves up an authentic cowboy experience, experience complemented by warm hospitality, charming rooms on a working ranch with fascinating Old West history. Um, located on the Tonto National Forest, it welcomes couples, families, and groups, and staff will find plenty to engage guests with all sorts of interests, such as horsemanship, hiking, fishing, archery, shooting, mountain biking, or activities like collecting fresh eggs, picking vegetables, meditating in a la brinks, bird watching, or stargazing. Family reunions, personalized weddings, corporate events can be arranged. Check on Travel Agent Partnership before booking. All right, and then you have Tucson over here, Tombstone and Bisbee. So this one's closest to that, Tanque Verde Ranch, featured in the culinary scene, array of flavors. Uh, holds up to 200 guests, one of the America's top old time 
cattle and guest ranches located on 60,000 acres of Tucson's most breathtaking desert landscape adjacent to Seguro National Park. After a day of horseback riding, fishing, and hiking, guests can enjoy plush accommodations, exquisite cuisine, and pampering at the La Sonora Spa. Children activities are also included. So that sounds like an exciting one. And again, close to these um, cities. So very nice sightseeing. And then Rancho de la Osa, uh, 40 guests in the his most historic of Arizona ranches where guests can ride the trails flavored by visiting presidents and movie stars through the high desert grasslands of the Sonoran. Um, learn to sort cattle, explore remnants of American Indian settlements or the neighboring wildlife refuge. Uh, guest rooms, public spaces, and restaurants at the ranch offer relaxation amid the colors and flavors of the Southwest. All right, so again, our legend shows all that. Okay, so how cool is that, huh, guys? You guys ready yes. to go to a dude ranch? Yes. And last, off the beaten track recommendations. You what? Do you want me to read, Marnie, or are you still uh, good? I'll finish it. I think this is the last one, and then we have a test. So thank okay, you. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I appreciate that. All right, so off the beaten track, recommendations. We would be remiss not to remind you of Arizona's array of unusual accommodation options. So you have the Grand Canyon Caverns. How cool is this? Seligman, yeah. Arizona's dry subterrane lodgings, courtesy of Mother Nature. That'd be cool, staying in a cave. Yeah. <laughs> How about Kitt Peak National Observatory? Again, one of the test questions. Staying in the dormitory here allows for ultimate in stargazing. So that's kind of cool. Hmm. The Shady Dell, Bisbee, hipster approved trailers done up in colorful 1940s, 1950s kids. Oh. How cool is that? <laughs> so you can pretend you're back in the hippie days, right? That'd be kind of fun. Hmm. Canyon Motel and Railroad RV Park in Williams. Here your clients can bunk in one of the two suit-sized 1929 Santa Fe Railway cabooses. How oh, cool. So These are kind of exciting, huh? Stuff, yeah. I love this. this the cool. wigwam comprises of 15 pointed roof lodgings, each grace with beautifully restored classic car parked in front, located on Route 66. Love to see the inside of that, huh? I know. I wish they would have shown the inside. That's right. what I was thinking. Rumline Vineyard and Lavender Farm. Oh, beautiful. Unique farm stay experience in chic Quonset huts. As always, consult resources for links dedicated to more complete roster of choices. I want to look this up, the wigwam. Remind me of that after we do our test. Oh, All right. Cool. I think we're done. Are we done? Yep. Yeah. Ba -ba -ba. Final exam. All right. So you guys all ready? All right. So congratulations. You should now have a certificate to be able to post on social media, letting people know that you just spent three hours on a training. Oh, um, wow. So again, congratulations, everybody. So um, back to dashboard. And then they should have also emailed you your certificate but you can go to your dashboard and pull up your certificate also. So again, um, congratulations. This was a long one. I thought it was only three, no. uh, three that it would take no longer than that, but it's, it was actually a, a very long one. So again, thank you guys for hanging out. Um, yeah, um, um, Travel Asian Academy, they well, normally have really long They're the longest ones. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I have to go to work. I thought, oh, this is only going to be a couple hours. Well, maybe. Together. <laughs> well, take care. Where Bless is you. it? Right here. Well, and certificate. Okay. So you should have got ah. three certificates. Okay. So there you go. Arizona Grand Canyon State. So again, make sure you post your certificates. Thank you guys so much. Again, um, Israel, we'll figure out when we're going to finish Israel. Um, I'm doing part three tomorrow of um, Canard. So again, if you want to catch up, here's part two, here's part one, and we're doing part three tomorrow. Wednesday, we're doing when Clea. When are you doing Clea? Clea Wednesday, on Wednesday. Okay. Um, oh. So mm -hmm. again, um, right here, you sign up for it here. Uh, we're going to hopefully do Caribbean after that, but again, I may have to do like makeup days and finish um, 
uh, Israel and Caribbean on another day. So we'll see. But again, thank you guys. Have an amazing weekend. I'm going to go get Thanks. some tacos. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to make some black bean tacos that I found a recipe for. So it got me hungry. So um, hopefully you guys have an amazing weekend. Again, thank you for hanging out with me. And um, you know, congratulations. Everything. Um, thank you, Marnie. You're welcome. Please, if I if I have um, Leah is um real quick the um they don't have it updated on the um the next week yet on the you know the place we look for all the webinars. Mm -hmm. It's not updated for next week. So this is one o'clock on Wednesday, right? For Clea. Um. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's listed here. Okay and listed here. Um, also, Rebecca, anytime you're registering for anything with travel, it's always Archer. Um, Evolution is the marketing site. So anytime you deal with anything hey. with travel, always, always put Archer and their information. All right. But yeah, here's the screen. Here's the links also for, you know, to register. Um, we got the links right here. This is posted at the beginning of each month. Okay. So you guys can pre-register for Peru, New York City, et cetera. If you're not in this group, mm -hmm. please join this group. Um, make sure you answer at? all that... the questions. Facebook. This is Facebook is it, under like... certificate workshops. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. okay. So if I if I like miss a training or something, does do I, I, I just it, I have it right here? I post it on my YouTube channel. So like today I I recorded it so you can catch it there. Also on this group here under featured, you'll see the whole calendar link of all the trainings that we've done in order, like in alphabetical order. So, you know, if okay. you want to learn about Africa or you want to learn about Arizona or Alaska, um, it has the actual link itself here over here and then it has my youtube here so like oh. we were just talking about harry potter the link wasn't working but you have the youtube video that will go uh, over that can... it uh, it worked i i completed it it worked this perfect. time but but like let's say that you're doing princess and uh -huh. i go oh i just realized she's doing princess and she's but she's in like her third week or whatever um, can I go here and you wait, catch up? Wait. Just like tomorrow we're doing yeah. card. You you can catch up now, do part one and part two, and then tomorrow you can catch up with us. Yeah. Hey, Marty, um, no, I do need to catch up before I before I join you. Well, it's recommended because because if not, then no, you may not no, be able no, to no, access. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Hello. We may um there's certain courses that you have that we may not have anymore because we could have taken them. Or if you don't um, look through the video, you can choose courses to take that we have not. So then you would have to wait on us if we start taking those courses. Does oh that make sense? yes, yes, yes. Uh, Marnie, do you know what part you're on in Canard? Uh Canard, we we are going to do the elective. Um we're on the elective. Oh, ones. Perfect. So awesome. yeah, we just finished the required for canard. So oh, because that's I was doing it on my own. So I'm exactly the what same. What should I do because so I can take the test? What was that? Awesome. I can take the test. It no, it doesn't allow me every time it get me out. Um, just I would clear your cookies and stuff, and then go back in. Just take a picture of the answers in the chat box. Um. So yeah, for Canard for tomorrow, you go to training and we're on the second portion and we're going to be doing four of the um, electives tomorrow. So if you guys want to catch up, that's where we're at. You uh, haven't done any electives right yet, right? Not under this, not under the staff captain. See here, and again, it's like, I know we did it all the required. Now it's saying that one of mine didn't show up, so. See, oh, you know, see, Marnie. I know, I know. It's that's annoying. <laughs> no, it will. Because it was this one. I think it was this Queen Anne that we did. I've been at it for. <sighs> I've given them three weeks to fix it. Yeah. Well, yeah, it doesn't like show you that you've completed it until you hit that 
12th or whatever, 11th or 12th one. And then instantly it says, you've completed the, please move to the electives. So, because mine didn't show as completed until I hit it. Okay. Any of them. All right. So again, congratulations, everybody. Hope to see you guys tomorrow for Canard. Again, you get a free cruise, pay port taxes and fees, as long as it recognizes you. So again, um, you know, Canard is very picky. So just make sure, you know, you guys check and, and take pictures, et cetera. Like now I'm just going to go through it again, just to make sure it recognizes. Cause like I said, tomorrow, we're just supposed to do the four electives. So it's still saying I have a required and I know we just did this one. So, um, but anyway, again, congratulations guys. It was a three hour training. So thank you for hanging out with me. Appreciate it. And um, I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. And just like I said, just thank you morning. Again. You're welcome. Thank you guys for helping reading. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's uh, it does take us to work. So for those that uh, did volunteer, I appreciate you. So, um, all right. So that's all I have for today. And I hope you guys have a great one. And like I said, we'll uh, uh, see you tomorrow. Okay. Talk to you about the question I have. Okay. Yeah. What did you have? Um. So I was wondering, can I take a job that is, I know there's like conflict of interest or whatever, but if it's something for like Alaska Air where I'm not um, booking travel, but I'm a customer service, if it's, cu it's a customer service. It's not up to us. We're fine with it because you're an independent contractor. It's up to them. It's up to the company. But we have people that work for cruise lines. We have people that work for the airlines. We have people that work for Disney. So um, it's okay. just up to whoever you're working with to say, you know, I also work part time as a travel. Oh, no, no, no. I that... have to do that, Emmy. I yeah. don't do that. I don't get the certificate. But uh, okay. yeah, but um, but as far as us is concerned, no, we don't care. The only thing that we care about is, you know, if you join another travel agency or travel company, you know, then it may be, um, you know, because again, you're working under Archer Travels, IATA number. And then if you go with work with right. another company, you know, that's that's what they frown on. Um, but otherwise, okay. now any of the, you know, industries, car rental companies, et cetera. Yeah, it's again, you could talk okay. to them, but conflict of interest with us. No, you're good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks so much. All right. You're welcome. Anybody else have anything? I'm going to go ahead and stop. I did, but I